Hello everyone, this is Bilyan Tolun from VWFM and you are currently listening to the VWFM podcast, it's the voice of the workforce management professionals. I have a very important guest in this podcast and in my opinion, he is also a big profile in this area of the workforce management industry. Dear all, my special guest is Rene Naiman, Head of Workforce Management Global Shared Services at Condient. I am sure most of you know him, he has over 20 years of experience in workforce management roles globally. To start with, it is not easy to prepare the right question for Rene in this 30 minutes podcast because there is a lot to ask, but before we go there, like always, I would like to say welcome and let's hear more about Rene. Thank you for joining us, Rene. How are you today? Thank you so much, Bilhan, uh, for the nice introduction. I'm, I'm feeling well, thank you. And it's uh, really a pleasure to, uh, to be here with you. That's nice to hear. I want you to introduce yourself with your own words, especially for the ones who do not know you. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm René Nijman, um, 52 years old, but uh, still feeling 28. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Dutch, living in Germany, and I, uh, I started with workforce management in, uh, in, I think, 2002 as part of my do- job to build a, a private 911 center. And I, I, re- I remember that I was working with uh, Blue Pumpkin at that time, um, for those that uh, can't remember that name. It's now for in 360 impact. Um, after this, I, I joined the call center as site director. Um, at that time, I had one planner, great guy, Jeroen Hof. Um, and in those days, workforce management was not called workforce management. It was just called planning. It, it was mainly administration, right? So yeah. who is sick, uh, who's on leave? So you can see how young workforce management is. Uh, it, yeah. It's still an area that's, that's uh, in a developing stage. Yeah. Um, yeah, and over the years, I did many other things, but always in combination with, uh, with workforce management. That's really nice to hear. Thank you uh, for your uh, answer, Rene. You already share how you start with the WFM journey, but as I know you, I would like to ask that where this patient come from? Because I don't believe that it is a role only for you. It's not a job only for you. You like workforce management a lot. You have a passion for that, right? Yeah, I, absolutely. Well, it, it's probably because workforce management is kind of everything, right? Um, everyone probably knows the saying that it's science and art, and that's really true. We calculate things, but also uh, need to have a feeling of uh, the calculation. Uh, if you would just run the, the calculation, then you f- very often find uh, mistakes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because you didn't put in that feeling. But also because it combines technical solutions with processes and people. Um, also because it's the core of your operation, touches main KPIs in your operation, but at the same time, the well-being of your employees. So it, it's really um, important function within the, the organization. And that's probably why I like it so much. I definitely agree with you. As the one who worked with you for six years, I definitely understand what you mean because yeah, the calculations or mat- mathematical methodologies are important to make a decision, but that should be a uh, kind of feeling or the art part of the uh, workforce management. So uh, then what do you think about the last technological improvements uh, that affect the WFM cycle? Because you pointed that yeah, there are a lot of calculations based on the tools. Uh, so these WFM tools, they, they have kind of new features uh, to provide more flexible scheduling, for example, or AI. Uh, improvements for the last decade. What do you think? What what are the advantages of these kind of new features? Yeah, a, a great question, Bilhan. Um, I like automation. I like automation a lot. Some people might find it scary uh, because they might be afraid of losing their job. I, I, I think that won't happen. Um, I think that automation can increase the value of workforce management. 
we are doing still a lot of work manually, simple, repetitive tasks that mm-hmm. can be automated. And when we automate those tasks, we can focus uh, with smart people on the real added value of workforce management. So, and um, yeah, although we are using tools like like Nice IX for in 360, EWFM, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, mm-hmm. the WFM process is still labor intensive, mm-hmm. uh, and we are using, I think, too many spreadsheet and we are doing too many manual tasks um think about the gig economy the gig economy is about bringing supply and demand together that's basically a little bit the same as we are doing with workforce management right um but without the platform that connects the end customer with the person that provides the service um i can see also within contact centers, a kind of platform like Uber or Bolt or Lyft or Takeaway, Mm -hmm. um, where employees can choose the, let's say, next call. Instead of choosing the next ride, the next taxi ride, you choose the next call. And you get paid depending on time of day or how busy it is or the complexity of the call and the uh, CZ of the customer. So I think, again, that we are on a route with workforce management, that, and, and we are not at the end of the route. We are still developing, and I think there's still a lot possible. Yeah. Um, at least we could automate the intraday management part. Um, it would simplify also the planning side. And there are already some tools on the market that go in this uh, this direction. I, I'm thinking of a work agenda or a nice EM, where you could make the first steps in, in automating your intraday management. And that would be a, a little step into uh, the direction of having a platform that is managing your supply and demand. Actually, uh, you're right. And... Even it looks like a little bit complicated when we explain the, the last improvements, AI, the new features of the WFM tools. And besides of these all, we have faced a pandemic. So I, I wonder that how it affects your day-to-day business uh, in Condient. I mean, when you manage, because you manage a large WFM teams, large WFM department, I mean, how it affects your day-to-day business? Yeah, it, it was kind of an eye-opener. Um, I I strongly believed in physical central teams. So bringing planners, schedulers, traffic analysts, real-time analysts all together in one big room so they could learn from each other. They could help each other. Um, If I know something and I struggle with something else, I can ask the the person next to me and, and vice versa. I strongly believed in that. And, and I, I think we thought in the same way of our contact center agents. Then all our staff had to work from home uh, one day to the other day. And surprisingly, there was no issue at all. Everything went smoothly wow. uh, without any loss of quality. Um, didn't know better. I would say that they are still going to the side. They're still working together as if nothing changed. So all my arguments of having those central physical teams together were blown away. <laughs> and that's, I, I find that really, really interesting. Yeah, right. um, because it's, it's an eye opener, right? We, we, we make everyday decisions based on what we think is true. But very, very often we don't have the proof. We didn't try, we didn't experiment. Uh, what's really the best way of working. And it turned out that having those teams together, not better than having people working from home. So for me, it was really an eye opener that one of my assumptions that I had strong teams and that one of the reason of the strong team was that they were in one room working together I have still strong teams, but they are not in one room together yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's life, I think, and it's it also uh, shows us something 
do you see that how the workforce management tools or way of working will change because we get experience uh, after this pandemic so in this wfm cycle which part of the uh, wfm cycle is your one of favorite one and why because if you ask me i have especially forecasting is my the my favorite one because when you really create capacity planning based on some logical numbers that you create during the forecast you can i mean you will be able to schedule better that's it then the rest yeah. of the all things uh, based on will be based on the real time management and yeah so which one is your favorite one well <laughs> you know me a little bit uh, bilhan so what i i think you will be surprised so what would you expect to be my answer here just 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 do one guess just for the fun um capacity planning <laughs> well that could yeah that's not a bad guess capacity planning is is also one of my favorites no i i was thinking the first thing i was thinking uh, was about scheduling so i will choose scheduling and i think for many people that will be a surprise because um well, I know that it's again an assumption, so I might be totally wrong, I'm, I'm realizing. But I think many people might see scheduling as a kind of in-between step or something you just have to do. But you could see scheduling also as kind of the uh, main activity, right? You talked about forecasting capacity planning. That's, that's kind of the preparation to do the scheduling. And then intraday management is just after the scheduling, trying to adjust the schedule because things change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the scheduling is kind of the core, if you think of, of it yeah, like that. that. Make, no, that, that definitely makes sense. So uh, then what do you suggest to any WFM professionals like schedulers, for example, to be successful in their, in their career? What kind of uh, things they should take into account? Well, the, the scheduling is also the balancing act, right? Between ESET and CSET, basically. Mm -hmm. um, you, you want to have a perfect schedule with a, uh, with a perfect coverage to make sure that your client is happy and your, the customers of your client are served as well. Um, at the same time, it's balancing of having your employees uh, be happy about their schedules. Um, the other thing that I like a lot about scheduling is you can do it in many, many different ways. There are many methods of scheduling. Um, and you talked about, you touched a little bit the, uh, the different countries, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And I, I really like working with, uh, different cultures, different countries, because you see the, the, the small changes and especially during your scheduling process, you can see the difference uh, between countries and cultures, et cetera, et cetera. Labor laws, so that, that's laws. another, uh, yeah. yeah, that's another reason why I like scheduling yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah, I, I like your answer. So I, I, dear listeners, as you can see here, Rene has really extensive experience in WFM. And you, you pointed that, yeah, you are using a lot of tools um, you have experience to use these tools. So for these last 20 years, what do you think, what are the common mistakes and the recommendations for a successful rollout for a WFM tool, in your opinion? When you, when you turn to back, did, did you ever think that you have a um, problem by using a tool? You don't need to give a yes. name, but if you, if you just face a common mistakes or you no know, recommendations, I, I will tell you my mistake. <laughs> I think one of my strong skills are processes and, and building structure. I like structure. And um, so if you look at our workforce management team, you, you see different roles. Mm -hmm. uh, we have planners, we have schedulers, we have traffic analysts, we have real-time analysts, but we have also supporting roles. Um, we have our own workforce management training uh, team. Uh, we have our uh, workforce management quality management team to support the, the core process. Mm -hmm. And one take I made was that uh, the workforce management tool was uh, supported by IT. It was for years the case, so it seemed logical. Um, but there was, was always some yeah small friction between us and it 
And I forgot one thing. I forgot a function within workforce management. And the, the function within workforce management had different names over the years. We call it today workforce management platform uh, management. We called it also business information management in the past. We have called it workforce management application uh, support. But basically, it's a function business side. So on the workforce management side, that it's the bridge between IT and the business. Mm -hmm. um, it's the function that understands the business requirements and can translate that in uh, system requirements. So I would say that one that, that my mistake was not having a team that was focused on our systems um, and being the bridge between IT who is the technical uh, who's doing the technical support basically on the back end of your tool and a workforce management team that is doing the functional support on the front end of your uh, workforce management system. Okay, that's, that's really tremendous answer, being honest. And thank you for your, your honesty. <laughs> and, You're welcome. <laughs> and, you know, when I uh, start working in your one of your team, what I noticed that NL has a very strong WFM, I mean, Netherlands has a very strong WFM tradition. There are a lot of colleagues who are involved into WFM and they are really experts. Like, as I also uh, experienced that in the UK, WFM roles are really in great demand in NL compared to the other European markets. But why do you think this happened? You said that you you like working with the different cultures. So yes. you should, you should ha somehow have an experience, right? Yes. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's a great question. So let me uh, tell you some, some history because uh, I learned also sometimes the hard way. Um, I, I started in the Netherlands. Makes sense. I'm Dutch, so I started in the Netherlands. Then I was invited to, uh, to support Belgium. Um, I struggled with Belgium. I really struggled with Belgium because I, I didn't have any experience with, with other countries, et cetera, et cetera. And Belgium, although they a yeah, part of Belgium speaks uh, a kind of Dutch, I, I really thought, oh, it's, it, it, it was so different. It was so dif different, different rules, different men mentality. And um, then I was working with Turkey. And at a, at a certain point, I was even thinking, okay, working with Turkey is easier, is closer to, to, to the Netherlands than, than Belgium, although Belgium <laughs> are our southern neighbors. Um, then over time, I learned... Uh, the differences be between countries started to work with the UK, started to work with Romania, et cetera, et cetera. And in the beginning, you think, okay, the country here, where you come from, that, that's probably usually your baseline. So every country is, is then different as your baseline. Mm -hmm. And over time, I realized that the Netherlands is, a, is not a good example as a baseline because maybe the Netherlands is even the exception <laughs> within uh, the world or uh, at least a large part of the world. Yeah, so yeah. what I also learned over time is, hey, I took the Netherlands because I, I didn't know any better as my baseline, but over, over time I learned, okay, but the, the, the Netherlands is a really, uh, it's, it's not the right example. And that's going back to your question, one of the things that makes the Netherlands different is we have a lot of part-time work in, in the Netherlands. We, we have a very flexible labor market. Mm -hmm. um, that's also, that, that's not only uh, by like le legislation or uh, labor laws, et cetera, et cetera. It's also a part of the culture. Many people work part-time. Um, there are other countries where you can work part-time Let's take the UK mm -hmm. or uh, and many uh, other countries. You can work part-time, but it's not that common. And one of the things I realized in my early days as well was in some countries, um, you are allowed to work part-time, but you won't make enough money when you are not working full-time. Mm -hmm. So the culture is not really supporting part-time work. In other countries, it's it's kind of of habit and, and behavior. 
uh, I found that, for example, in the UK, it was very common to work uh, uh, full time, less common to work part time, mm -hmm. at least compared with the Netherlands. And that makes it, I think, a, a little bit different, because if you have an environment where you have a lot of part time work and a lot of flexibility in your labor market, then your workforce management requires a, a different approach. We in the Netherlands, we worked with people that had employment hours between zero 40 fixed number of hours. Just you, you, you work with us and you can be working zero hours a week or 40 hours. A week. And that meant that we had to be creative in, okay, how can we uh, find the, uh, how many hours that person would like to work? Do you like to work 30 hours or 32 hours or 28 hours or maybe 40 hours? Mm -hmm. uh, probably not a zero because then, <laughs> then you wouldn't be employed. But so it, it, it required uh, for the Netherlands environment to be much more creative mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because yeah. The, the, the environment is different. And that's, that's, I think, also what you see in other countries because the environment is different the development of workforce management also ha is in, in different stages or follows a different line. I cannot agree more. You are right. Because I have experience in workforce management uh, while I mean, in work in Turkey. Uh, so I know the uh, market there. And I have now experience uh, in UK, but as I had a chance to work with the other countries while working uh, in Condient, I also uh, had the chance to meet the, work with the other cultures and went to there to visit, you know. So you're definitely right. It is definitely based on the cultures. And I think NL has the, has the strongest one in the European market because I have never seen in the other countries, like uh, there are a lot of professionals related to workforce management. It's not only for the contact centers, by the way. But yeah, what I would like to ask is that when we make our business in the contact center for workforce management, it includes a lot of details, forecasting, planning, scheduling, labor laws, real-time management, but it is not the same, even the theory for the other uh, industries related to workforce management. It is, they don't have the same details. They have different kind of metrics. Uh, so do you also foresee, or do you also have any assumptions? What are these essential and the common metrics between these WFM areas, not only for contact center, yeah. you understand what I mean? Actually, this yeah. would be my question, but I just wonder your opinion. Yeah, I think you're right and you're wrong at the same time. And let, let me explain why. So workforce management is associated with customer care. But if you think about the function, the, the, the thing that we do for the organization, yeah. you will see that in other industries, something similar happens. If you think about um, manufacturing or uh, things like that, then they probably would call it su um, supply chain ma management yeah. um, or production control. And in those areas have different terminology that they, they, they are doing very similar things and maybe even more advanced than we are doing with workforce management today. So that's why I'm saying you're wrong. Mm. In some industries, I think you have supply chain management where they, let me take a, an example. We are talking about shrinkage, um, and which kind of, but you could, could call shrinkage also waste. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, yeah. uh, in other industry, they would call it waste. Uh, we are talking about average handle time. In other uh, industries, they would just call it productivity. Yes. Um, so I think there are industries <clears throat> where you have supply chain management, production control, which function very similar. And I would recommend anyone uh, within workforce management to find a, a good book about supply chain management. And I'll read it and try to translate uh, the language mm -hmm. that they are using that, to the language that we that are terminology. using with it within uh, workforce management. You're also right, because there are other areas where they don't apply IT management, workforce management, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I will give you one example, it's years ago, so it might be, might be outdated and I'm pretty sure it's outdated by now. 
but um, I went to university, I have a planning course, and there were different people from different industries, uh, some, uh, someone from the police, someone from hospitals, etc, etc. Mm -hmm. I, I remember the one of the uh, guys from, from the police, they said, well, we can forecast when you are crime is, is committed. And uh, the one from the hospital said, yeah, we can also have we, we, our first uh, first aid, uh, we can't forecast that either. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, well, that's not true. Because you know that during the night, you probably have more bucklers than, than during the day. Yeah. Um, so there are patrons for your hospital, for your first aid, Saturday morning is usually busy. Because then you have all the people that are playing soccer, at least in the Netherlands, <laughs> <laughs> um, and get insured, uh, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So even with accidents and events, at, I think there are patterns that you can find. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's why I say, yeah, you're probably right and you're probably wrong. And again, the, the examples that I use, for, uh, I know that they are doing exactly what I'm, I said in hospitals today and in the, with the police today. So this is years ago, but uh, you will, you might find other uh, industries where it's less developed, but uh, I, I do think there are industries where it's even more developed than what uh, we are doing uh, with in customer care. And we should learn from that. Yeah, but I think that basically optimization for any industry and what I learned, uh, it's based on also the same mathematical theory. So it is quite similar. It sounds quite similar to me, but as you said, yeah, there are some differences and the patterns the per industry are different uh, compared to contact center. But uh, this is, I think, why we like workforce management because it is very really useful. It works for the optimization for any kind of business. Um, actually, we are out of time. Huge thank you for setting aside some time today. Uh, and for being our guest in this podcast, Rene. You are an inspirational workforce management professional, and I'm, I'm happy to have you here today. Very happy being here, and thank you share your fantastic experience and the thoughts. Uh, do you have anything else to add before we close the podcast? No, I, again, uh, Behan, thank you so much. I think a great initiative to, uh, to share knowledge, to uh, give um, some focus on, on workforce management. It's, I, I think, one of the things I, uh, I also very often say that uh, workforce management uh, is a profession. Um, there's no university for uh, workforce management, but it is a profession. Yeah. So I think it's, uh, it's great that um, initiatives like this are happening where we uh, share knowledge, where we build a network, because uh, I think together we will be uh, even better than we will uh, than we are today yeah yeah thank you so much guys if you like this episode subscribe to us on spotify apple amazon or youtube you can also check the other episode on vwfm.com thank you so much for listening to us talk to you later bye thank you for listening to vwfm this podcast is made and produced by andre letal bilga hentelman Doug Carstetan, Gonzalo Gomes, and Kim Paz. If you like the show, don't forget to share it with your friends and colleagues. Visit our website, wwfm.com, to find more exclusive interviews and WFM content. See you next time. All rights reserved. <laughs>